Hello guys, it is Modest Major here, bringing you the sixth episode of my Agree to Disagree series, the series in which we pit against one another two of the Halo franchise's major components to see which one comes out on top. Now, last week I decided to go on your feedback and go with the idea of a vehicle-based Agree to Disagree. Um, so I decided to go with UNSC versus Covenant Vehicles. It's kind of an all-encompassing one and we can give our feelings on, you know, it kind of uh, gauges our feelings towards all of the vehicles in the game in some way or another. Now, um, it was kind of surprising to see your guys' feedback. There were some really interesting answers for both sides. So without further ado, let's go into the responses. The first comment comes in from Promethean ZZ, going with, I'm going to go with the UNSC vehicles. While Halo 4 I felt didn't do them justice, I will never grow tired of the sound of my Scorpion reloading or my Warthog Gunner picking up a lovely killing spree. They promote teamwork in the cases of the Warthog, Elephant, Falcon, Mongoose, and Badassery in the terms of the Scorpion, Mantis, and Hornet. I've always felt like Covenant vehicles are too sleek and the only ones I use are Ghosts for Splatter sprees. P.S. I know what the ladies like. Cool to be cold comes in with, I'd have to say Covenant Vehicles for the fact that all of them you can drive alone and still be able to kill people, as in if I'm in a match alone I don't need to run looking for people to jump in to defend me. The only UNSC vehicle you can lone wolf in is the Scorpion. In every Covenant Vehicle you can drive or pilot it and shoot. XD towards ZX writes, definitely the UNSC vehicle due to the Warthog and the nostalgia of escaping danger in them on the last levels of Halo CE and 3. Also, it being so useful for capture the flag when you need a driver, gunner, and flag carrier. However, I do admit I love the Banshee for doing the flips in order to escape things like the missile pod from Halo 3. Revengeance comes in with, Close call, but I have to lean towards the coveys. The tank and Gauss Hog are awesome, but the Wraith is my favourite vehicle overall, and the Banshee is the only flyer in the game anyway. Nick Scheffler comes in with, I would have to say that I prefer UNSC vehicles, although Covenant vehicles have a more direct effect on the battlefield. UNSC's arsenal of vehicles inspire a lot more team-based play, and in a playlist like Big Team, Infinity Slayer, or Capture the Flag, isn't the whole point to work with your team towards a common goal? Teamwork is the biggest factor in playlists that involve vehicles. Combat Chuck comes in with, I am not a big vehicle kind of player, but I prefer Covenant vehicles because of their speed. Human vehicles require a lot more coordination with teammates, but Covenant vehicles can be used to quickly gain an edge on the enemy. Um, a lot of interesting responses, as I said before. I really like that last comment. Um, because that's kind of what gives the edge to Covenant Vehicles for me. You know, you don't really have to worry about strategies and um, keeping on on the ball or whatever, being a very good vehicle player. Because when you pick up a Ghost or something, you just boost the enemy side. You know, you weave in and out of opponents and you don't necessarily have to work about the tactics or strategy of it. And because I am a moron when it comes to tactics and strategy, I like that. Um, maybe that's just me. But... Um, the responses were interesting, as I said, and I was kind of thinking this to be a more, con not controversial, but a more argumentative one and a more close-sided thing. So I was really surprised when the votes came in as UNSC winning by 17 votes, Covenant with 6 votes. Um, very, very interesting. I kind of, for me, it was one of the harder ones I had to think about more than other ones. I mean... Number one, I'm not a very um, active vehicle user anyway. Like, I don't necessarily have the most um, developed opinions on them. I kind of try and stay out away from vehicles. My, like I said, my strategy isn't very good when it comes to, you know, getting in a tank and staying alive. My problem is when I get in a Scorpion tank, I sit there thinking, Oh, I'm invincible. No one will ever destroy me. Ha ha ha. And then I just run into the middle of the battleground and get completely destroyed. Which is always fun. Um, which is, like I said, why I like that last answer so much because it's kind of true for me. If I can get into a ghost and a banshee, I don't have to worry about, um, you know, getting myself into trouble because you can escape more easily and readily. That being said, um, my answer on the situation of UNSC versus Covenant Vehicles is kind of a contentious one because the Warthog is such a good idea for a vehicle with a gunner turret, a side seat passenger and a driver each having to perform their own specific roles, and if one of the roles screw up, you could see yourself in trouble, especially with the driver and the gunner turret. You know, you need a solid gunner turret who's going to pick out the most um, dangerous and uh, most threatening opponents, but you need a driver that's going to be able to get you out of situations as quickly and as successfully as possible, but also get you into the right situations at the right times. And I really love that idea. I really love it. It's like a well-oiled machine. Well-oiled machine mechanics, you know, I don't know what I'm talking about, but there you go. It's like a well-oiled machine. Every, every you know, cog has to perform their role, and if one slips, the whole thing goes kaput. 
which I like. Um, I also like the new Mantis. I think like the new Mantis is a very cool, fun u- vehicle to use, and it adds another dynamic to the um, the UNSC vehicles. Um, but at the same time, on the other hand, the the Ghost I feel is a really iconic vehicle of the uh, Halo franchise. The boosters give it a real sense of speed and uh, you know power in the. Um, in fact, the new sound design behind the new Ghost is actually incredible in Halo Four. I think I think like it really feels like a piece of alien tech or whatever. Um, and the Banshee also with the uh, ability to escape out of battles quickly and readily um, with the Banshee bombs, ability to switch between Banshee bombs. I was very depressed when they took out the Falcon from Halo Reach. I mean, if the Falcon had been in, it probably would have been a, uh, a you know, a, just a done deal. I would have just said, yeah, UNSC, because UNSC has the Falcon, it has the Warthog, it has the Mongoose, it has everything going for it. And with the Hornet as well beforehand, um, when they used to have a Hornet. But as someone else previously mentioned, the UNSC has no flying vehicles anymore which is really depressing and I'm also very depressed that they took out the elephant um, especially when they showed uh, footage of the uh, I, I, the mammoth sorry yeah they showed footage of the mammoth and it almost got people excited that oh my god we're going to be able to drive in this gigantic mammoth in the next game and then it just was only in campaign it seemed like a really 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 big missed opportunity for them um, but at the same time with all that being said I still prefer the UNAC vehicles just because of one comment put it pretty nicely with the idea of the nostalgia for, of escaping through Halo Combat Evolved and Halo 3 at the end of both of those games. And just the teamwork that it inspires, um, as another comment um, rightfully said, is that it really promotes teammates within the playlist like Big Team Battle and Capture the Flag. You have to make sure that you are all performing your roles effectively. Whereas a Ghost and a Banshee kind of uh, encourages Lone Wolf play, which... For me, I mean, I personally like the fact that they encourage Lone Wolf, but at the same time, I see how from a balance standpoint and from a uh, just a game mechanics uh, standpoint perspective uh, that the UNSCs perform better. But that brings me neatly onto next week's episode um, and the the debate that's going to be taking place there. And I've decided to go with the idea of Halo 4's campaign versus Halo Reach's campaign. Now, I know I've gotten feedback from you guys whether which game out of those two was your favourite overall, but we haven't really homed in on the campaign elements. I haven't really done a campaign-based agree to disagree. And I have played all the Halo campaigns and I uh, really enjoy them to a certain extent, so it would be interesting to see which ones... Uh, uh, which one you found better? Do you enjoy the Halo Reach hanging around with Noble Team as the fall of Reach commences? Or do you prefer Halo 4 being back in the shoes of Master Chief and hanging around with Cortana? Uh, I have been Modest Major. I hope you enjoyed watching this episode, guys. And I will see you next week. Peace out.